and immigration can be so stressful. Throughout my application period, I was watching a couple of your videos, and it and it really did help me, okay. and it motivated like, me. Like, do yeah. I need to pack a bag, or do I need to fight immigration? Because That's one of the key things in Canada that I wish we we all would like lean on when we get here. We're back with Steven to then now, how do you help other immigrants either new or those interested? Because some people are still just fishing around, figuring yeah. out if Canada is the place. So we want to give you guys honest perspectives, reality of living in Canada, what our advice is to you either preparing, coming here or already being here and what, what the future holds for you in Canada. Yep. Right? You just said something really interesting, which I appreciate, is that you like to try new things, you like to try and go and do stuff in Canada. And I think that I'm going to start episode talking about that a little bit because I think that sometimes you come here with blinders on like this. Yeah. Focus on immigration. And that's that was my experience. Uh -huh. Right? I was very much eyes on the prize, eyes on the prize. Don't go nowhere, don't spend the money because if you're not staying, you're gonna go home with all your money in your pocket. <laughs> And so I didn't do much. Not that, and I think that probably that probably even spilled over from even my socialization, because um, we I didn't go out a lot. I didn't do much even when yeah. I was in high school, um, university, all of that stuff. It was really I didn't go out much, mm -hmm. and so it wasn't part of me to do that. And so I come here not naturally being that, and I haven't done stuff. I haven't ever been to Courtney's. I've been to um, Barrels Pepper Pots. Okay, I've yeah. eaten from Barrels, Barrels Pepper Pots, but that's, that's it. Fair. That's, That's it. So I haven't done much and I would, you know, encourage people to smell the roses sometimes, you know, because sometimes an immigration time is so stressful. So then you're hyper focused on something that's so stressful. So therefore your adrenaline is always like a fight or flight. So like do yeah. I need to pack a bag or do I need to fight immigration because they rejected my application? Um, so I would say, you know, smell the roses sometimes, go see the CN Tower, go to the lake, mm -hmm. do what you can afford, of course. Mm -hmm. But Take time to do stuff. Go to Courtney's <laughs> or but, random but you, places. But you see, it's good because if you had the GJDYC in your time, then you'd have a community where we'd be able to do things together. Yeah. Because one of the things that we've done recently is, you know, Jamaica played Canada recently in a football match. I heard about that. Yeah, we yes. had a group outing. All of us, we... A few mm -hmm. of us would just call up each other and we say, you know what, let's just do a group outing. And we just did and we win. Uh -huh. Because there are times, you know, you're in a place, a new country, uh -huh. you're a stranger in a new country, you don't really have much people, or you probably just have like a few people that you know. Uh -huh. Some people just don't want to go by themselves, you know. Uh -huh. Right? So we've built a community where we can enjoy things together, you know. We share the same way of thinking, uh -huh. we share the same culture, you know. So it's just we try new things as well like even upcoming in january february we're planning to do, have like a little um get together ski trip oh, hmm. so you know i've never been skiing or see you have your blinders <laughs> on i need to try new things <laughs> <laughs> and, so, I, and i've been here for um, for 10 years see see so i hope you come on the ggdyc trip man these are things where we want to we socialize with each other we build up each other we have fun together you know okay. Mm -hmm. These are some of the things that we want to work on as well. And I'm glad that you brought that up and I'm glad that we met actually because there is an element to be in person that I wanted to build into my whole as to like an immigrant community. Yeah. But it's so much to do on my own. Uh, so I was like, plug <laughs> <laughs> wanna do something cool? Go out with them. <laughs> I'm I'll be there. I don't have to plan it, nothing, I'll just show up. <laughs> well, why not? Why not? Yeah. We just show up, you're taken care of, you know, we, just, we yeah. all have fun together. Cool, I like that. So would you say that that would be your, because well, I'm going to ask you, like, looking back, what's one thing that you wish you knew before you came to Canada? Would being aware of the JGDYC be something that you G -G wish? <laughs> <laughs> would that be something that you wish you knew before you came to Canada? I wish I knew about the GJDYC and the GJDC. I wish I knew about the Jamaican associations. Mm -hmm. As well, I wish I knew that um, there was a community of people who were willing to help as soon as you landed. Mm -hmm. Right? These are things that some of us just don't know about. Mm -hmm. And um, if we knew that there are Jamaicans out there who are willing to help us, then it would make our lives a tad bit easier. Mm -hmm. Now, we come to Canada and we think about things like, yo, we can do this on my own. 
you know, I've been struggling on my life and my Jamaican me can tough it out. Mm-hmm. But really and truly, one of the key things to Canada that most people don't realize is it's networking. That's how you survive That's in the Canada. Word of the year. Networking. networking. You have to network, you have to meet new people, you have to be open mm-hmm. and you have to be willing to be vulnerable as well. Mm-hmm. If you don't share your story and tell others that, why well, I've been applying for jobs you know, and I've been struggling, you know. Mm-hmm. I don't even know what to do, you know. You, you know somebody who can probably help me. That's how I got one of my interviews. Right? Mm-hmm. That's how I got one of my interviews. Mm-hmm. Networking, I shared my story with uh with a Jamaican lady that's here. And she said, What? But I have a friend who is in IT, man. Let me see if I can help you out. Mm-hmm. And that's how I got one of my interviews. Mm-hmm. So we have to be able to to share and help. Come together. Yes, we have to share a story with others so that we can get help. And then we also need to help others who need the help as yes. well, mm-hmm. right? Mm-hmm. Because there will be stages where we need help and there will be stages where other people need help. So we have to help each other. Mm-hmm. And I think that's one of the key things in Canada that I wish we, we all would like lean on when we get here. Mm-hmm. So the Jamaican associations and uh, different uh, Jamaican um, organizations, the alumni organizations, the Kiwanis yeah, Club, alumni all these all these organizations organizations are here for us. They join to be a part of them, and they offer help and support that yeah. kind of thing. Cool. Yeah. Cool. Cool. I like that you bring that up, right? Because like I, when I started my YouTube channel, it was. I just realized that there's so much either misinformation or lack of information out there. And people would ask me about going to Canada or they're asking questions and they'd have like the wildest expectations. And I'm like, that's not, no, what? Mm-hmm. And I was like, you know what? Let me just start a new channel. And it started out of just helping people. I even met somebody last night who was just like, I was really just watching you, sh- you thing on a Sunday, yes. a Sunday night. And, you know, people are watching several people in immigration on YouTube, but then they were able to connect because I'm Jamaican. Yes. Right? Which yes, is super that helpful. is true. Mm-hmm. Because I was watching your videos back home as well. Throughout my application period, I was watching a couple of your videos and it, and it really did help me mm-hmm. and it motivated me because mm-hmm. I, I applied to come to Canada. I got rejected, right? Oh, yes. You didn't even tell us about your rejection. Yes, I got rejected. But then, you know what? The same thing that I just spoke about, you shared your story with me. Mm-hmm. I use that as motivation to say, well, I let me just reapply too. again. Mm-hmm. Why not? Mm-hmm. I didn't use a consultant. I didn't use anything. Mm-hmm. I did my research online. I watched YouTube videos and stuff. And I tried my best. I did what I needed to do. Good. And now I'm here. Yeah. So each one, each one. Yeah. Right? You don't know who you're helping when you're trying to just throw some stuff out there, some information out there. Yeah. You never know, but I'm sure it will, if it's a stone, it will, it will hit somebody or something. Okay. If you were to give three top three top pieces of advice for people either planning to come to Canada or here in Canada, even the context of your community, mm-hmm. G, J, D, Y, C, mm-hmm. uh, what three top pieces of advice would you give? But I think there's consistent themes throughout this. It can't repeat none of them. Ajo, you can. <laughs> all right, all right. If I were to give the top three advice, I would say join the GJDYC community. What about people who are not Jamaican? Even though, like, friends of Jamaican are terrible, like, because my, my audience is global, mm-hmm. right? So people from Africa, people from Mauritius, all over the place. Well, well, let's let's put it like this. Okay. I'm not in the business of turning people away. Right. Right? Mm-hmm. We're all humans. Mm-hmm. We all need help there at so much of our So, really so and then the more people you help, the more they'll be able to return the favor in the end, mm-hmm. you know? Mm-hmm. So if we can use our community to help and build others, they will help us to build our community as well. Mm-hmm. So... I'm not. I'm not averse to something like that. Helping mm-hmm. people outside of Jamaica. And you know what I can think of before you go on to number two or three? Don't forget it. <laughs> mm-hmm. Is that people in the GJDYC could have a network um, of people from your country, right? So, like you say, for instance, I joined the GJDYC, right? And I know people from um, Sudan. Mm-hmm. I know people from um, well, Nigeria, Ghana. Uh, Colombia, mm-hmm. Peru, right? So then connecting to a network connects you to other networks. Yes. So, okay. Because that's that's also one of the key things too. If we connect with these people, in the end of the day, Jamaica benefits. Mm-hmm. These are people who you can share Jamaican uh, stories about okay. Jamaica with. Mm-hmm. These are people who will be willing to look forward and travel back to Jamaica to see what Jamaica is like. Tourism. Exactly. <laughs> so our way of helping and sharing with them will actually ignite this need to 
oh, let me see what Jamaica is like. I've heard so much stories. These people, these people are so good. Let me go and explore and see what it's like. Mm-hmm. That's our way of contributing back to tourism as well. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. You know? So I would say I'm not averse to helping others and people outside of Jamaica as well, right? Yes. I don't mind that at all. Okay. Tip number two. So tip number two, I would say networking. Mm-hmm. Networking no matter who what no matter where no matter who Mm -hmm. networking is key Mm -hmm. right so be open be willing to reach out Mm -hmm. be willing to 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 share your story be willing to ask be brave Mm -hmm. you know to volunteer and put yourself in 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 situations where you sometimes you feel uncomfortable Mm -hmm. but it it helps to 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 push you a bit farther than what you would be or where you would be Mm -hmm. you know Mm-hmm. Uh, a former mentor of mine back home, she would say this a lot, right? And it stuck with me straight through. It's where good luck is when preparation meets opportunity. Mm-hmm. Right? Mm-hmm. So you must always be prepared mm-hmm. because when the opportunity presents itself, mm-hmm. that is when good luck happens. Mm-hmm. When you're prepared and you make use of it, yeah. you'll find that things will, will end up aligned for you. Mm-hmm. And, and that's one of the key things for me. And the third advice is, whenever you're buying a winter jacket, don't buy any winter jacket. <laughs> buy a winter jacket with down and Trauma. feathers. <laughs> buy a winter jacket with down and feathers. That's good advice, because somebody even asked me recently, why can't we have recommendations for an affordable winter jacket? Or what type of winter jacket? Yes. Like so, down and feathers, and look at the tag yes. that say minus 40 yes. degrees. Always the filling must be down and feathers. Don't wear anything else. If you want to stay warm and survive, don't have feathers. The key to winter in Canada. And to give you guys hope, right? Because it's winter now and he did not come here in a down and feather jacket. When you drive, it's different than taking the bus. Yes. And when we just come, all of us are taking the bus. Yes. And we're standing out in the cold. That is when you need to be very, very, very prepared. When you drive, the preparation, you need to be less prepared. Like I can't tell the last time I wear two layer pants. That's true. But when I was taking the bus, yeah. All right, so that's hope. I'm just giving you a little bit of hope yeah. plus preparation that it gets better. You know what I mean? It gets better. Um, um, so, well, you've spoken about this, but if you want to sum it up, how has Canada impacted your personal and professional life? Honestly, I think that it, it has improved my thinking of, of what I'm capable of, mm. of um, the things that I need to achieve in my life as well, how I go about it. There are things back, well, there are things back home that I did I didn't see myself doing. I didn't think I was capable of, or you know, I didn't see myself achieving. And now being an inv- in an environment like this, I see where it's all possible now, and I see that um, there's no limit to where you want to reach or what you want to achieve. Mm-hmm. You know, it's just you making up your mind to go for it. It's slightly a bit more difficult back home. No matter how hard you push or you want to reach, mm-hmm. slightly difficult. But here, not that it's not difficult, but it's a bit more manageable. Mm-hmm. And you have more access yeah. to different things that you'd want to do. You can be anything that you want to be, you know. Back I mean, home, you have to be like, what is what is making the money so I can just take care of the family and this and that. Mm-hmm. Right here, you can do what you want to be and you still be able to, to make a sufficient living and survive. Mm-hmm. That's all it is. And what about the future now? So you're here, it's now two and a half, three years, well, right? 2023? <laughs> yeah, I think I'm talking about it. It's been a short while. Yeah. <laughs> what do you want for the future? What do you see for the future? Do you think, do you see yourself moving to a province? Or what What do you think? Well, I don't see myself leaving Ontario. <laughs> I don't see myself leaving Ontario at all. <laughs> and you want to have the opportunity to potentially move to Montreal. Yes. And you never bought it. Yes, no. I'd probably do Montreal for a year okay. just for the French and learning the French. Okay. But um if I couldn't live in Ontario then it would be Montreal. Yeah. Okay. Montreal, Ontario. It would be correct, but Montreal specifically. For the future I see myself uh, I found this new phone passion passion where I've developed from the whole GJDYC thing where I get this sort of fulfillment from helping people. Mm-hmm. You know, sometimes you see some random people like, Oh, Thank you so much for this. You know, you don't understand how much, you know, this has helped or the small advice that you've given, you know, what it has done for me. And the joy that you get from that is just something different, you know. The smallest thing, the things that you do, it impacts people a lot. And you just don't know that. 
So I think I want to stay on that path where Jamaicans within the Canadian community, especially youth, if I can find some way to continue to contribute to their development, help them with their decision making, their stability, that kind of stuff, mm -hmm. you know, who knows? Probably start a foundation or something like that. Why not? But I want to keep helping people and grow in that area as well. Cool. Yeah. Cool. That is Stephen, who is our local representative for the Jamaica, the Global Jamaica Diaspora Youth Council. That's he is that plus many things. And um, thank you so much for taking the time out and being here with us, sharing your story with us, sharing the community with us, and building awareness around um, such an amazing initiative. Yeah. Um, I'm sure we'll hear more from you. We'll see you in more things. Of course. Of course. Of course. We'll see you at Sports Day. I'll have you down as a volunteer. Would you like a volunteer? Uh, <laughs> <laughs> um, <laughs> um thank you so much for being here thank you guys for watching remember to subscribe share like all these wonderful things catch up on episode one two and three and uh, this has been our immigration stories series which comes out every sunday except for the christmas sunday i will see you in the next video and we will see you at the next event or when we catch up with you in sometime in the future yeah bye, bye. <laughs>